This is what I'm feeling like da, 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 da. Let me tell you what I'm feeling like da, 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 da. Yo, yo, what up, dope people? I'd like to welcome you back to the Keep It A See No podcast. I am your boy, Brown. This is the Week 13 NFL Recap. We gonna start it off in ATL, where we had Tampa coming to town, Brady and the boys, and they beat the brakes off ATL, 30-17. to 17. Tom Brady, he threw the ball 51 times, people. 51 times, at least 20 times in the first quarter, I believe, watching the game. Like, he's not 40-plus years old. 368, four touchdowns and an interception. Leonard Fournette, 44 yards on the ground. He also had seven catches for 48 yards and a touchdown. We had a Chris Godwin saying, people, he got busy. 15 catches for 143 yards. He didn't get in the end zone, but 15 catches, 143 yards. Shout out to that. Shout out to Gronk. Gronk had four for 58 and two touchdowns. Tampa now 9-3, people. How you feeling about them? Are the Buccaneers a Super Bowl team? Keep it a scene, though. Let us know. ATL, Matty Ice. He didn't play all that bad, 297. He didn't throw a touchdown. He didn't throw an interception. Cordell Patterson, the, the little gadget guy, they little secret weapon there, their, their best offensive player, 78 yards on the ground. He didn't really do nothing through the air. We did have a Russell Gage sighting, people. Finally, 11 for 130. Again, he didn't get in the end zone, but 11 catches. Shout out to that. ATL 5 and 7 still fighting. They still fighting. Next up, we had Arizona. They went to Chicago. First game they got Kyler back. First game that they 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 got DeAndre back. And they got their 10th win of the season, 33-22. Kyler Murray only threw for 123 yards, but he did throw two touchdowns. He also ran for 59 yards on the ground, and I won, but two touchdowns. So four touchdowns all together, threw for two, ran for two. Connor, 75 yards on the ground. He also had two catches for 36 yards and a touchdown. DeAndre Hopkins, his first game back, two for 32 and a touchdown. Again, Arizona is 10-2. and two. What's your thoughts, people? Are the Cardinals a Super Bowl team? Keep it a C note. Let us know. Andy Dalton, 239. No, pardon me, 229. Two touchdowns and four picks. Yikes. Yikes, that Arizona defense was mean. David Montgomery had 90 yards on the ground and a touchdown. He also caught eight catches for 51 yards. People, we had a Jaquem Grant Sr. sighting. Who? Jaquem Grant Sr. Who? Stop playing, people. Jaquem Grant Sr. 5 for 62 when he got in the end zone. Chicago is 4 and 8. Next stop, the Chargers. They went to Cincinnati and they beat the brakes off the Bengals 41 to 22. Good golly, Miss Molly. This game was funny. Chargers went up 24-0. The Bengals scored 22 points, and then the Chargers scored the rest, 17 straight. Herbert, 317, three touchdowns and an interception. Austin Eckler, he didn't do much on the ground, but he did have 59 yards, and he did get in the end zone. He also caught five out the backfield for 45. Mike Williams. Five catches, a buck ton. He definitely got busy. Shout out Keenan Allen. He also got into the end zone. The Chargers are now 7-5. and five. Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow messed his pinky up in the game. He played like a warrior, though. He tried tape. Tape didn't work. He tried the glove. It didn't work, but he definitely toughed it out. 300 yards, touchdown, two interceptions. He also ran for a touchdown. Joe Mixon, he been getting busy the last couple weeks. Not so much this week, 
But he did have 54 yards and a touchdown. And I think they said he got like a little streak going with touchdowns in consecutive games. We had a T. Higgins sighting, people. He got busy. Nine. 138 and a touchdown. Cincinnati is also 7-5. and five. Keep it a C-note, people. Pick one clip one. If you had to choose right now who makes the playoffs, the Chargers or the Bengals, pick one clip one. Let us know. Next up, we had Detroit. They was 0-10-1. Coming in yesterday, they hadn't won in 364 days. They got Minnesota coming in. They got Justin Jefferson coming in. And they got the victory. First victory in 364 days. 29-27. And they done lost a lot of heartbreaking games at the end of this at, at the end of games this year. So the way they won this year, I mean this game with the walk-off touchdown was only right. Jared Goff, 296, three touchdowns in the pick. He did his thing. He got busy. Jamal Williams, he had 71 yards on the ground. But the player of the game is Amon Ross St. Brown. Who? Amon Rye St. Brown. That boy definitely got busy. 10 catches, 86 yards, a touchdown. Most importantly, the touchdown was a walk-off touchdown. Detroit has finally got their first win of the year. We will not have a winless team in the NFL this year. They are now 1-10-1. Minnesota, Kirk Cousins, disappointing. Disappointing. He threw for 340 and two touchdowns. Dalvin Cook was out today with an injury. So we had uh, Alexander Madison starting. He had 90 yards on the ground. He also got into the end zone. We had a Justin Jefferson alert. He got busy. 11, 182 and a touchdown. The touchdown that put them in front before Amon Ross St. Brown walked off. Minnesota's 5-7, and seven, and their playoff chances is just about over. Heartbreaker right there. Good golly, Miss Molly. Next up, we had Miami. They was hosting the Giants. They got the 20-9 win. Five wins in a row for Miami. Watch out, people. Tua, he threw for 244 and two touchdowns. I've been grinding Tua up. I always say I don't think he can throw the ball. I didn't think he was a good quarterback. But I got to keep it a C-note. During this five-game winning streak, Tua has been rocking out. And he got that offense looking all right. I'm just saying. Miles Gaskin, 44 yards on the ground. Jalen Waddle didn't get in the end zone, but he did have nine catches for 90 yards. They won five games in a row. We do got to watch out, though. Jalen Waddle did leave the game at the end of the game. As for the Giants, well, Miami, pardon me, is now 6-7. and seven as, And as I continue to say, five-game winning streak. Watch out. The Dolphins trying to make the playoffs, people. The Giants, Daniel Jones, he was the last-minute scratch. Mike Glennon got the start, 187 and an interception. It's just bad over there in the Giants, oh, over there in New York, man. Um, offensive line look horrible. Saquon, 55 yards on the ground. That offensive line stinks. He also has six catches for 19 yards. Evan Ingram, four for 61. Kenny Galladay, he was hurt in this game, knocked out the game. I don't know the severity of the injury. But I must keep it a C note and say, this offseason, Kenny Galladay was looking for a big contract. Didn't get the big contract. Signed a one-year deal, a, a prove-it deal. And the only thing he's proved is he wasn't worth the money that these GMs were smart by not giving him that money. Good golly, Ms. Molly, his value just dropped. Woo! We might get him for close to nothing in free agency. I'm just saying. The Giants are four and eight people. Next up, we have Philly. They was in Jersey to play the Jets. Jalen Hurts was hurt. He was a late scratch. Gardner Minshew got the start. 
took care of business. The Eagles 33, the Jets 18, Minshew 242 and two touchdowns. Miles Sanders ran for a buck 20. Um, he did twist his ankle at the end of the game, so let's watch out for that. But we did have a Dallas Goddard sighting, people. Six, a buckle five. Not one, but two touchdowns. I must say, over the last two years, this is the best game I've ever seen Dallas Goddard play. I don't know if it was the quarterback. I mean, I'm not going to get carried away. They were playing the Jets. But I'm just saying, the Eagles six and seven. They had that six win mark. So, if we're going off what I said, that means they're going to lose these next four. What's your thoughts? I'm just saying. The Jets, Zach Wilson, he actually played good, 226, two touchdowns and an interception. This game was going back and forth in the first half, and then the Jets got stuck on 18 points. Tevin Coleman, he had 58 yards on the ground. Shout out Elijah Moore. He's been getting busy the last couple weeks. He has six catches, 77 yards, and a touchdown. The Jets are now 3-9, and nine, people. Next up, we had Indy. They went to Houston, and they shut the Texans out. 31-0. Yikes. Carson Wentz, he only threw for 158 and a touchdown. But that boy Jonathan Taylor, that boy good. That boy Jonathan Taylor is good, you hear me? 143 on the ground and two touchdowns. Michael Pittman Jr., he had six catches for 77 yards. The Colts, they 7-6, still fighting. What you think? Will the Colts make the playoffs? Keep it a C-note. Let us know. Tyrod Taylor, he started for Houston. He didn't finish. He was benched. Threw for 45 yards. They brung in Davis Mills. He didn't do much better. He only threw for 69 yards. They did absolutely nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing on the ground. Rex Burke had 30 yards. But they did absolutely nothing through the air either. So, you know, Brandon Cooks, 3 for 38. Houston is 2 and 10. Now, how spiteful does, does a lady run the Houston Texans? I mean, how spiteful are you to not let Deshaun Watson play, but you don't want to trade him because you want to ask for outrageous stuff, but you just keep getting smoked. You could have took some some draft picks or something. Good golly, Miss Molly. Dumb and dumber. I'm just saying. Next up, we had Washington. They went to Vegas. They got the 17-15 victory. Heineke, 196, two touchdowns and an interception. Shout out Antonio Gibson because we've been grinding him up. Well, I've been grinding him up on a show about it, especially in fantasy football. Last two weeks, he's been hooping. 88 yards on the ground. He also caught five catches out the backfield for 23 yards and a touchdown. Logan Thomas, back off of IR. Three for 48 and a touchdown. But he got hurt in the game. Don't know the severity of it, but he did get hurt in the game. Washington finds their cell phone a little one streak, and they are now 6-6. Six and six. Derek Carr, he threw for 249. Josh Jacobs, 52 yards on the ground, and nine catches for 38 yards. Hunter Renfro, shout out Hunter Renfro. I call him a, a low-budget Cooper Cup because he reminds me of a low-budget Cooper Cup. Nine catches. Bucko two. The Raiders, they fall to six and six, and they fighting for the basement. NFC West. They want that basement spot. Well, at least it looked like. Next up, SoFi Stadium, LA Rams. Trying to bounce back off a three game losing skid. They was winless in November, people. It was hosting Jacksonville when they beat the brakes off Jacksonville, 37-7. to Stafford, he threw for 295 and three touchdowns. Daryl Henderson suited up, but being as though he was so 
injured a bunch of nagging injuries. They let Sony Michelle get the start and damn near every tote. He had 112, 121 on the ground and a touchdown. Cooper Cup, the best wide receiver in the league. Eight, 129 and a touchdown. Shout out Van Jefferson. Six catches, 41 yards and a touchdown. Odell got in the end zone as well, people. The Rams are eight and four. Jacksonville, Trevor Lawrence, he threw for 145. Uh, Carlos Hyde, he had 24 yards on the ground and a touchdown. And Laquan Treadwell, four catches, 62 yards. Jacksonville was now 2-10. and ten. Yikes. I'm glad the Rams bounced back, but I'm still not convinced. Um, even with the score, like, it wasn't – Dominant, dominant, like I think it should have been. Where the hell was Von Miller? Is anybody, is Von Miller done? I'm just saying, keep it a scene, people. Is Von Miller done? Next up, we had Pittsburgh. They was at home against Baltimore, and they came away with the 2019 victory. Ben Roethlisberger. 236 and two touchdowns. Najee Harris, 71 yards on the ground. A strong 71 yards on the ground. Started off slow, but it looked like he kind of wore the defense down at the end. Deontay Johnson, he had eight catches for a buck 05 and two touchdowns. Pittsburgh is now 6 5 and 1. Baltimore, Lamar Jackson. Had another so-so game throwing the football. 253, a touchdown, and a pick. He also ran for 55 yards. Devontae Freeman, he ran for 52 yards and had a touchdown. Plus, he caught five out the backfield for 45. Um, Hollywood Brown caught five catches for 55, uh, 55 yards. 20 to 19, Baltimore scored at the end. And instead of kicking the field goal and going to overtime, they went for the win. They didn't convert the two point conversion. They lost the game. They are now eight and four. What's your thoughts on Baltimore going for the win instead of going to play for overtime? How y'all feel about it? Keep it a C note. To be honest, um, I think we should see that more often. I would love to see that more often. I'm just saying. Next up, we had Seattle. They was at home taking taking on San Fran, the Niners. Niners been streaking lately. Seattle, they came away with the 30-23 to 23 victory. Shout out Seattle. They helped me hit my parlay ticket, won me a couple dollars. Shout out Vito, too, my co-host. He was a little pissed off with me. He said, fuck my ticket, basically. <laughs> he didn't want to see his team lose. Russell Wilson, he got busy, 231. Two touchdowns and an interception. We had a tra- Travis Homer sighting, people. Who? Travis Homer. He had 80 yards on the ground and a touchdown. He also scored on a fake punt. We going to get back. Well, I guess that's the 80 yards, the fake punt. But um, we got to get back to that. Um, Lockett had seven for 68 and a touchdown. Russell Wilson and the fellas, they are now four and eight, still in the bottom. As for Jimmy G and San Fran, Jimmy G threw for 299, two touchdowns and two interceptions. So, so game. Elijah Mitchell, he has 66 yards on the ground and a touchdown. We had a George Kittle sighting. That fella got busy. Nine for 181. And how many touchdowns did he add? Two? I believe he had two touchdowns, if I'm not mistaken. Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk. She, Vito. 
Everybody else that's a San Fran 49er fan, what's up with Brandon Ayuk? Did he really go out like that? Slug. Fake punt. Homer running right to him. And instead of going to make the tackle or trying to make the tackle, he runs the opposite way, lets himself get blocked? Really? Really, Ayuk? Soft. Soft. I could not believe that. Somebody needs to check that guy. That 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 was out of pocket. Sunday night football. Another boring Sunday night football game. We had Kansas City at home. They was taking on Denver. Kansas City got the win 22 to 9. Patrick threw for 184 in an interception. He did have a rushing touchdown. Clyde Edwards Hilaire, 54 yards on the ground. Uh, Daryl Williams, he had three catches for 60 yards. He led them in receiving. So, yeah, Kansas City, five games in a row. They're now eight and four. As for Denver, Teddy Bridgewater. 257 a touchdown and two interceptions. This game right here showed one thing. Melvin Gordon, your days is numbered in Denver. Javante Williams, a buck 02 on the ground. Six catches for 76 yards and a touchdown. Yikes, he had a monster game. He just showed that if he get 20-plus carries, what he can do. So, Melvin Gordon, you better start thinking about where you want to play at next year because I'm pretty damn sure you won't be playing in Denver. I just got to keep it a C-note with you. Jerry Judy did have four for 77. Denver is now six and six, people. After 13 weeks in the season, what's your thoughts? Who 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 is the best team in the NFL right now? Let us know. New England tonight, Buffalo, Monday Night Football. Who you got? Keep it a C note. Let us know. I want to do an overhype. No cap. Miami is on a five game winning streak. People. Miami Dolphins will make the playoffs. Is that overhyped or no cap? Keep it a C note. Let us know. The Kansas City Chiefs have won five straight people. Overhyped or no cap? The Kansas City Chiefs are back to Super Bowl form. Drop a comment. Let us know. Last but not least, the Washington football team. They're on a four-game winning streak. Overhype or no cap, Washington will make the playoffs. Keep it a C note. Let us know if that's overhype, no cap. I know this is the NFL recap, but Sunday night we did have a, a boxing match. Tank Davis versus Isak Cruz. I just want to get you guys' thoughts on the fight. Um, Tank said he messed his hand up around the sixth round. He did win a unanimous decision. To me personally, I think the scorecard ripped him off a little bit. I don't think that he lost the fight, but I think the fight was closer than the judges have it. How do y'all feel about it? Another thing that I noticed about the fight um, – Boy, Isaac Cruz, he 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 was hurting Tank with some of them body shots. You could tell if he had a little. That's what I go back and I be telling people when I tell Vito, when I tell Tone, and all that. Like he 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 wasn't a boxer. He was just he was walking into a lot of punches. If if he was jab jab setting that body shot up and jabbing into Tank. It probably would have been a different fight, but, you know, when when you had these guys that ain't fought nobody, they don't they don't know what to do. Um, but I will say for a lot of the shots that Isaac Cruz hit Tank with, 
Um, I don't know if none of them other guys probably could put Tank down. Um, he Cruz hit him with a couple solid shots, and I don't, I don't think like Haney got the punch power. I don't think Garcia or none of them. Maybe the only person that probably because Cambosas, I don't even think Cambosas could put Tank down. But never know. What's your thoughts though, people? Do you think the scorecard was right? Did he dominate the fight? Does it look like any? Did it at, at any point in time look like Tank was hurt by any of the body shots? What's your thoughts on the post interview where he says, uh, fighting Haney, Cambosis, Brian Garcia, any of that would be easy work for him? What's your thoughts on that? Is that overhyped or no cap? Let us know. Well, as always, appreciate you for tuning in to the show. Um, continue to give us feedback. Continue to put everybody on. Continue to hit us up with topics, questions of the day, anything else. You know what I mean? As always, I'm your boy, Brown. And just please tell a friend to tell a friend to tell everybody to keep it a C-note. Now, I'll holler at you. Thank you.